The bread is always showing his uh, mood and his, uh, his uh, opinion through the eyes. So, isotropia is always some evil thing. Isotropia is some anger. Because they are passive, they are giving up. Isotropes, they want something. They want to see better. For example, without glasses. And so I had a pair of uh, very near relatives who had astigmia. The same thing, equally the same thing. And the boy, who was a bit aggressive, was quitting yeah, is a joke, yeah. The girl, she was a more Compromise. 
economies made between accommodation for distance to get sharp glasses. The part accommodative and the part with glasses, but the accommodation for distance should be reduced and the hydropia are fully corrected. And the surgery which is taking away the capacity of the convergence is reduced to, a, a, to the heart or less so that the small capacity of convergence is not enough for distance and sooner or later divergence may appear. With the glasses it occurs all. We have about in 10% divergence with the originally convergent isotropia and giving glass. After some time, not straight eyes, but small angle goes in small isotropic angle. If it would be starting, uh, if, if it would be stopping at straight, the iso would not come. But the small angle is already taken by the brain as a little exo, because the correct position is this, by the brain. If the eyes are like this, forced by the glasses, it is a small exotropia. And if it is a small exotropia, it could be also like this. It is never between straight. It's going immediately over. And if we are trying with prisms to bring it in a straight position, then the fixation is going up, not standing in. Then it is more vertical angle, up or down, avoiding the big bifocal position. And then we allow to go exo, and then giving less correction. And when it comes back, then we have a chance that it is going into bipolar correction. It's not taking again the isotope. But it is remaining. Because this over correction of the isotropia is changing the animal's correspondence. More as it was possibly with this change. If it is making it like this, then uh, sometimes quite quite a lot of isotropia. And it is comes back with three directories less correction, then take care. It should be stopped here when they are straight. And it is possible. Two or three glasses, perhaps uh, one worn for the school, one taken for at home. Because otherwise, you have one day isotropia, the other part of the day, some isotropia. So it is uh, the balance between the two. But with the glasses it is no problem. If you would do surgery seven times, I heard a lady who had done 14 surgery. But she was an orthopist, so she could, she had to take it from the professor. 14 times. At least the eyes were straight. <laughs> Restricted to straight <laughs> <laughs> And then the head had to be moved. <laughs> there have been strong bundle of keeping the eyes straight. <laughs> and uh, keeping the eyes straight, you cannot read. Because then you have to bring the eyes in convergent position. Yes, so it is still a question of the future. When can we compare thinking about 
causes of physiotopia <coughs> and not about symptoms only. Convince ourselves and convince the parents and convince the doctors in this order. So if you have some questions, Yeah. You talked about sciences a bit, and that's a common term a lot of people uh, come across. People you talk about that and its relationship with nystagmus? Yes, yes. In nystagmus, we have not been speaking enough. Nystagmus is also a physiologic nystagmus in the end position. When you are looking to the right, in the end, there is some jerking in this time or the other. And this end position is in isotropia the middle position. About the middle position. And if you are abducting, you are having something which is comparable to end position jerking in this So why should it be pathologic? Something is wrong in the brain. It is not a composer, it would be something wrong. And we had the experience in such cases when the abduction was already free, it was easy with the glasses. Then the child has a strong will to bring the eyes back in his own position, in spite of the glasses, sometimes. And when this occurs, then you see a nystagmus in other Again, the jacks. This is again the end position. And it takes a, again, a, a, a little, it has a duration until the movements are easily taken, iso and exo. Up and up. And then the nystagmus may be there still if you look at the fovea with a strong magnification. The fixation is not completely fovea. Maybe a little more. And in Sianxia syndrome, there is always a loss of visual acuity. In best cases, I have got the manuscript from Sionchia, the best cases at age 4 have about 50%, 6, 7 years have that 70%. And later on, maybe 90. It will never be high. And the fixation is never for well secure for that. It is a little bit moving. And uh, perhaps it is a good test to go with the point of the Kupas uh, or, or any other ophthalmic uh, ophthalmoscope to go out of the point. If you go out, up, it is immediately following. If you go down, immediately following. If you go nasally, it's not following. So there is still a little bit scope. Or it takes a long time until it is following, at last. So that the, the fixation is central, but not fixed central. It couldn't be learned at an early time. Fixation has to be learned. The child, after birth, is not knowing for what is good the eye. But the anatomic <coughs> relations will show the best is if I use with the forever. And then I have to learn as the first programming how 
how to use this power to keep under object attention. And if you have script, and there is coming alternating suppression, and something is remaining, even if, uh, if the most part of it is alternating, some may be remaining, which is not alternating, or then you have not a strong fixation, couldn't learn. And this is also the Latin, this the Latin, and I am always forgetting the, the, the classification, which is very complicated and really chaotic sometimes. And I think we have uh, not these problems if we are correcting also the astigmatic eyes. This is also an experience which I had with a, with a very big nystagmus, Shai Ben Bisha, as, as uh, the movement in rain. And he had a severe astigmatic error. Uh, correcting this, and I went home, and after one month, they are coming back, and the mother is telling, the stubbornness is much less. And then I have seen the infant made like this, head spasmus, no time. And I thought, God, now what shall we, what have we done with their glasses? Take it down. No, no, doctor, don't take it down. This is a very short reaction. He does it sometimes, just to compensate for the loss. Oh, he likes this, but he keeps it up. And in two months again, it was not. It was again. He learned astigmia is uh, to see lines. And when it is corrected, you see points. So fixation is again revived. And I don't know what is, what is the percentage. I have not very much vision in this world. And when I made a paper about this, the doctors have told me, what has to do a stigma with this problem? Nothing to do. This was the end of my, my publication about this. You, you cannot explain everything somebody is showing like that. That's, if it's shown like this, you should recognize. But to, to, to me, it's too much <laughs> to make stronger arguments. The only stagmus is also full with prejudice. And uh, the only stagmus with, uh, with uh, albino eyes is uh, also different. So the stagmus is a lack of fixation due to, to many causes which are not allowing early and correct fixation. And then you have this stuff. So it is not a direct change in the brain, it is a lack of early <coughs> ability to learn fixation, how to fix it. This is the stuff. And it is also uh, only a, uh, there is no sharp border between normal fixation. Normal fixation is also having some very little movement. And if it is compensated by mirrors, then the sight is disappeared. Because the nerves need always some change to keep up the impulses. If there is no change, everything is inhibited. And this movement is more coarse if there is no, no border. How to stop? It is both in the other way again. These are the normal fixation movement. It can be taken only electronically. It is showing this. It's always moving.
And the, this is also the question that how should be the parents knowing that they should go with the two months old baby to see some competent baby who can measure the refraction and can help with the glass. And if they don't be afraid of surgery, don't immediately on the baby. So if they are only having their glasses with the, per, with the prospect that in two years or if one year, sometimes three years, it can be abandoned. I don't think that it is a so, so terrible aspect. The mothers are crying. It is But it is the heart, not the brain. The brain is telling, okay, good, but the heart is, is stronger. <laughs> Mother, and, and she's crying. But now I have a baby with us. And uh, I had already uh, so tales that uh, people are telling, why are you doing this for your baby? You are not a real parent. The baby is not seeing anything yet. <coughs> but he's learning to see. And I heard also that the tourist bus was
So then we tell the palms to play with ball. The ball is moving quickly, this direction also, not full a full ball, but hand ball. <laughs> and then when the suppression is coming, the ball is otherwise. It is seen again. So it is not not disappearing. <coughs> and so the stereoscopic vision I was having some patients when it started to get to come in with 13 year, years of age. It was not destroyed. It is always there. It was inhibited by suppression. And if the suppression was going away with tricks, by moving quicker than the suppression is able to move, then came back the, the power and somehow the brain was not afraid to look with both powers without the help of suppression. It is a little bit more work for the brain. And it is not done easily. If the brain was never doing it. But it can do it if it is forced. By this quick movement of the ball. And then it takes another and it will be uh, stabilized. So it is not very complicated. I think a very simple brain of a libel of this uh, the small user which is uh, which is arriving and, and he can land on, on a grass here and has such big the oh, dragonfly, dragonfly. It has super. It has a binocular vision. It has stereoscopic vision. It can land exactly. And if you cover one eye, it cannot anymore. We did this with, with a black paint. They are heavy crazy. <laughs> 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 Surgery. 
you can never prevent amblyopia. And you can never treat amblyopia with surgery. And this is the danger when the child is operated, the parents are thinking now that everything okay, no more control, and they are astonished if uh, afterwards one eye is very deeply amniotic, which was not before the surgery. So that amniopia is not preventing, is not treating, surgery is not treating, not preventing amniopia at all. And it has always to be uh, given glasses for occlusion against amniotic. And if you do surgery or not, it has nothing to do with the amniotic. So that we are having only, I told you, this case with the high anisometropia where we have amniotic. But other cases, I don't remember. Perhaps if they have not been coming for years, so no treatment, and they had still microtopia or small angle at last. If the, if the glasses have been worn, we have seen microtopia has disappeared without seeing. Four years later, there is no microtopia. But it may be also that the glasses are not worn, so they are coming back after four years. The angle was often uh, growing bigger. Then the suppression was also bigger and amniopia may be there. Decompensating with our glasses. And, and a small angle can decompensate even with over 10 years. It's never finished. And the amblyopia can recur every year. But the amblyopia is uh, more frequent in early ages. You can cure an amblyopia and not doing anything with the sleep four times or five times a year. It's coming always back. Later on, it is coming rarely. But it's coming also back. So therefore, the best is to prevent the strabismus, to prevent the, the small angle also. And there is no danger of provoking against the amblyopia of the suppression, which is a, a, a protection against uh, every disturbance which spring. I think. Uh, Animals correspondence is for us a big hinder, hinder. But it is for the child a big protection. It is helping to live with screen. So this is the, the way of, uh, of nature how to how to come out with the anger, with the strabismus, how to how to live. It's such an impossible thing. The animal's correspondence makes it possible. Only a cure is made impossible without spirit. Because this is another thing. To live without spirit. But if you have to live with the spirit, then it is much better if you have animal's correspondence. I was reading ten years ago about the horror, horror to the audience. Fusional horror. And there was no suppression, there was no animal suppression. It was constant in diplopia. Horror to the audience. This was a, a mode to find it in operation. Without operation, there was no horror fusing on it. No. <laughs> because the, the animal's correspondence was keeping up the angle which was adapted to. And taking away this angle, then you have an, another situation. There is no adaptation possible, it is too late. You have more or less difficulty all the time. And so we're asking the patient 
for Norden, after so much operation, now he should do the best thing and he should shoot him. <laughs> But he was telling himself. We were going from Vancouver to Alaska by a ship in the Holland America line and there was a captain's room where about 20 people and we were speaking about the uh, business every day. It was very well organized and I had been speaking about uh, a diagnostic sign of animal's correspondence, first year of age. And there is no sensory answer. And I made the surmise that if the anger is not disappearing with the correction, then you have animal's correspondence. And this is the sign of animal's correspondence, that the motor anger is not disappearing. And after this, I was asked by the professor, I don't want to name him, that how are you coming to this meeting? And I'm an international member. <laughs> so there was no pleasure that we can now, we can very early have a diagnostic sign for animals corresponding. It is too early to be diagnosed. And uh, have you heard how quickly is a rise in animals correspondence? About the speed. If it is acquired, it has to show a speed, a certain speed. It's starting now with a swim. When is it already the animals correspondence? Which step? The first step, second, and so on. You have heard never after. There is harmonious animal's correspondence or disharmonious animal's correspondence. It is acquired, but how is it acquired and how quickly or rapidly? Nobody cares. And I was so astonished that this is not, a, not a looked upon. But if you have this diagnostic sign that the angle doesn't disappear, then you can measure it. When you compare the case, this was starting isotropial, so much delay, giving the six diapters, the angle is not diminished at all. It has a strong unmanned correspondence. First year already. Then the other, with six diapters or five or four diapters, the angle is going to the small end. It is the first step of animal's correspondence, the first small suppression, the first shift of localization. And this is a very interesting thing, that the shift of localization and the... Or can I move? The shift of localization is always character. And the suppression is always center. So if we have, this is the deviating eye. And here is the right eye, and the program. The program is fast, so so suppression is central. And the shift of localization is peripheral. Why? Because we are not in the periphery, it is almost no, no difference if it is here or here. The localization is not so exact as it is here. So it can easily move. Here it cannot move at all. Here it can be moved a, a little bit. We are a little bit more. The most is occurring here. And if this shift of localization, localization is arriving here and having a small, then the suppression is superfluous. 
The suppression is always active process. The active process needs always energy. The localization shift is not an active process, it is already an established thing. So the active suppression is taken back in the shift of localization when it arrives the program must be suppressed always. It cannot be showing shift of localization. And then it is the suppression again at the much less loss of energy. So this is the second step of adaptation, keeping the angle at the adaptive function. Small at first, small, only the periphery, later on more. If all the retina is shifted in the debut line. And the third, which is the third one, that the convergence tonus is also stabilized. It helps to keep it. And it is interesting with reprogramming. The first is the tonus of convergence which is not stabilized. If you have a static angle of 20 grades with the treatment of glasses, it will be perhaps 30, very, very, between 30 and 10, or 40 and 5. It's no more static. So the convergence is again moving in and out. And so it can be that uh, the angle is going back. And now the shift of localization has to go, go back to allow the convergence to get a smaller angle. And it is possible if the eye is covered and the information is taken away by the second So the information is lost, it is not disturbing, it is going back. And the last is the suppression. And this is the, the first step of adaptation by acquiring, acquiring, by acquisition. And the last step by reprogramming. So it is the best, again, to prevent all this. All this adaptation. Yes? Do you consider um, ARC to be an uh, a nominal thing is either there or it's not there? Yes, it is also possible that in certain situations is the anomalous correspondence there, in other situations it is not there. It depends perhaps more light is more for anomalous correspondence, less light it is the normal correspondence coming back, coming back. Or more tired is a more Animals correspond, less tired, morning is it normal, in the evening it's animals again. So the two can be used as two languages or two dialects. Every, every uh, Switzer Dutch can speak Switzer Dutch or can speak high, the high German, without dialect. But if he's getting old and he's a bit uh, sclerotic, and he's speaking only Switzerland. So the animals <laughs> is in the end. So if you, you mentioned a few minutes ago that no one is really interested in or has been interested in the, the development of ARC. What is your feeling about the time course, the typical time course of development? Are we talking yes. about hours or days or years? I think uh, I have shown with this, uh, with this uh, car this, this is the speed also acquiring the animals correspondence. You remember which was this? The factors we have been speaking of the here are the factors and here are the months first, second, third here is the sensitive age and fourth, five and this is the 
and he was about 15 or 10. So the delay has to be taken for perhaps here to have here on. The delay, delay has to be taken with this to give the duration of treatment. And this is by the by the mark, here is the mark. And the speed of animals correspondent is also here is the heart. <coughs> now we, we have no what should we do kilometer in seconds or how how could you how could you tell it exactly? What is the speed? But it is here the highest is already left uh, uh, half, and here is no speed at all. It's too late. So it may be that in one week you have uh, already animals correspondent. And perhaps in three days you have already, or in five days you have already a small angle. The first, the angle is all, uh, uh, suppression and the shift of localization. And the animal's correspondence has also this component. The localization shift and the, uh, and the permanent suppression. So some days, I think. Yes? Is it crossing how long? This is the importance. Crossing for two seconds. Then the baby was helping himself. I was crossing the eyes and I helped immediately. And this can happen a day ten times or if the duration is not growing, then it is not in the Second question. Um,
Indra. So you can probably I think. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, when they are straight, then we, we give some uh, labyrinth to draw with the eye, which is uh, less dominant, to draw a labyrinth, because the localization is still a little bit uh, insecure, and if you draw the labyrinth with one eye, you go always against the black, black wall. And the parents should be there and are telling, oh my head, you are going against the wall. So that the child should be uh, should be motivated to go in the wide, always in the wide, not against the black wall. And this is changing. In two weeks, three weeks time is already much better loving <coughs> drawing. And uh, you you can have a big loving, very big broad corridors, or you have a my, tiny labyrinth, more difficult. Along that same question line, what you will see from a lot of adopters here, I know, will be activities that they'll be doing, purple activities, going from abduction to abduction back and forth, and trying to promote alternation of fixation, rather than just a passively using a patch. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I use more this movement. Because the, the screen is, a, is an aberration in, in this movement, if the object is here, the child is looking here. But if it moves, then he can learn, perhaps, to localize it more easily. Perhaps this uh, method also with the... With the uh, yeah, with the bigger ring and with the string. I told you, Maddox, it is Mars, Mars, which is having such a plate like this and uh, having a line on it. A line, and uh, there is going something, a little animal, by magnet on the lower part. Mavas plate is called. Down is a magnet, so you are not knowing what is doing the magnet. And then the upper side is moving a turtle or something. And the child has to, uh, to recognize is there only one line or are there two. And then we have also filters, fogging, fogging filters. From 0.1 to, to 9.10. So 10 grades. And then if you have suppression with the right eye, then we put a little bit fog before the left eye, and the child has to tell when it appears the order. One, two, three filters. It is mostly with the three filters at the beginning of the treatment, and later on it goes back. So we can give a number how strong is the suppression. It is fucking filters. Bangarta has a has a point more dense or less, and we are putting the uh, plastics transparent plastic. But if you have five transparent plastic, you have a little fog before the eye. And if you have seven above that, then it's more. Fog. If we have only two, there is less. Fog. It's very simple. By this plastic box that you have in, uh, in a small plate. For infants, um, do you recommend um, gingham patterns? It's like the Italian tablecloths, you know, with the checkerboard pattern. Oh, yeah. To put up along the walls and around the outside. So even if they are for business, you're theoretically at least cultivating binocular cells. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I have no experience with this. Yeah. 
So it is a, is a new, new perspective of the business if you prevent on a broad scale how many I mean still some suppression, some, some disturbance and the prevention is very 100%. It is really rare, even if the brother or, or sister is sleeping and now is coming the newborn, sometimes they are waiting until it is already fifth month of age. And fifth month is already a little bit dangerous. It can be already a, a small anchor. But with two, it is not so. Only the parents are again. Sometimes they are coming, sometimes not. But they are told already when the mother is uh, having a seven month baby, now in three months you are coming, or four months at least, and, uh, and some are coming. And I have photos here where a small baby is wearing the grass and, and uh, seeing completely straight and the sister who was coming only with uh, nine, and she is still having a small eye. After one year treatment, and the aspect with the small and really prevented can get down crevices, and the other really need for eight or ten years, because the squint is coming back. I've written all the paper and given the, it to the, to the part. Why is coming back the screen again and again when it is once pure? Screen is not a disease at the origin. It cannot be cured. It can be prevented. But it has to be prevented again and again, perhaps. If you are taking down the glasses after two months, the switch is coming back. <coughs> so quickly it is not uh, prevented completely. So the prevention has also its borders. And if uh, but the parents are telling, if it was a disease and you have it cured, then it is okay. Yes, it's so with tuberculosis. If it is cured, it is cured. It's not recurrent, is it? Or morbid, or horizons. It's even immunity against it, but not with screen. It recurs again and again. Yes? I'd like you to talk about an exact case of where you have a, a child who's three months old and you initiate treatment with glasses, when will you bring them back for their first follow-up to see if you've reduced the tonus and, and stop the squint? How many yes. weeks or days? I think it is very important that the first visit should be a, a rapid one, because there are many questions which the parent couldn't be asking at the first visit. And so I tell them, come back within a month if you come in one week or right, or two weeks, it depends also how much questions, how much problems you have, and we can speak it over. And then the next visit, it can be perhaps already two months later. When they go home then, do you have them looking to see if the squid drops to maybe 10% of the time, or to exactly. notice an improvement, and do you change how often you see them back yes. because of the response? Yes. Yes, if all there, this. If and and uh, I have sometimes that the baby is taking down the glasses when he is put in the in the, in this uh, uh, yes, yeah. And then we have to, to speak about it that he sh she shouldn't put in so frequently. And if they're still squinting on the follow-up check, your next step is atrophying to the dominant eye. Yes. And how long would you go with that before you bring them back again to look at them? Then perhaps uh, we are thinking about a second glass, 
because if the glass is having some repair and if it, it takes two days then you have to screen to be current so we are telling the glass is now to be replaced is it? And we can make also a small change eventually it has not been the same as it was the first if it is reading, it should be a little bit stronger. And then you have two glasses already. When one is to be repaired, the other can be immediately put on. And then we can have a longer two months contract. And then at the two months, but only one glass. It's not good. It's, it's a, an imitation for recovery. Now at the two month, now the child, the infant is four months old, about four months old, because you, well, three, we started them at three in this baby, so they'd be about five months old now. If you're still seeing it, is, are, are you too late to start the bi-nasal occlusion? Should you have started that earlier? Or is, is that... If I see that the child is squinting with the glasses, I start the bi-nasal occlusion already. Even, even before you do the atrophy? Yes. Yes. One other thing that you've been talking about is that you don't change the bi-nasal, the parents are actually changing the bi-nasal, yes. they're instructed yes. how to do that. I instruct them that they should observe which eye is dominant. And if it is uh, too much dominant on one eye, they can take down one millimeter and put on, uh, take down from the squinting eye and put on the dominant. It should be equal fixation. And the parents himself can do this if they are a little bit intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking, have you scissors? Yes, we have. <laughs> and then we are giving this taste. And it is a, you, you can't do any harm. It is not a, a, a quickly moving turbine or an, an automobile. It's a brain. It is responding. And you, you have to change the stimulus. It's not an engineer work with a, with a tens of millimeters. It is only behavior observation which eye is fixing. And it is very frequently so that the eye is alternating at home. It is seemingly equal. And now the parents are coming to see me. And this is a dangerous situation for the baby. And she thinks, now I cannot use both eyes. I have to use my good eye. And she is looking all the time with one eye at me. And the parents are telling it is not so at home, she is changing. And the most difficult is if you give a bonbon. This is now a business meeting between the baby and me. And she is looking only with one eye, all the time, and grasping. And then perhaps I do immediately a bit more and try to, to bring the baby with the other eye. And she is grasping beside She is not able to close it. Again after some looking, searching. And then you see now that it is uh, only superficial that the eyes were equal. If it is a business and an important thing, then the baby is looking with a better, with a, with a perhaps more covered eye, but more dominant eye. So the situation is also changing if it is more dangerous or, or if it is hard. Because it is very, very difficult to look with this eye, which is covered so much more. But she is doing it. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to take a break again. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if just about 15 minutes again, there's uh, juice and some cookies out in the hallway. Take care while we're all here. Nothing? Okay. So we'll turn back over to seven here.
person.
the Society of Geography of Tamil. <coughs> she wrote a book. That she was going around the, the tropical islands, and there is no need for glasses here. Because the highest hypermetropia was one and a half, and the highest myopia was minus one. So where are the others? During the thousand and thousand and thousand years they were going away. There is no family. And it is order, it is the completely opposite with the old agriculture families uh, and uh, nations like the Jews, the Arabs, Japanese, Chinese, they need all, almost all, <laughs> have some myopia or asthenia or something, and swim is also present in the veins. So this is a, an argument which is a very strong proof. But if you want to ignore it, it is possible, although this is all, everything can be ignored, as long as you don't like it. <laughs> and Eidemann was uh, finding no statistics in this book. But the other causes which are supposed to cause the business, encephalitis and, and different uh, diseases of the nerves, of uh, polyneuritis, and I don't know, is very frequent in this period with intoxication and so on. But they are not screening. So if there is no refractive error, then even the fever is not causing squint. And uh, so it was uh, very interesting. Now I think Eidemann is, is not living anymore. She was even she took, was an old lady. But you elder you heard in the name, I think. Eidemann was his and we went uh, there from the from the education of patients and now about these uh, frames <laughs> which is a, a very odd construction of mine because it is a uh, it is more comfortable to look under glasses <coughs> which were prescribed at first with a, with a uh, glass frame and with retinoscopy and then they are coming back with the glasses and then we leave the glasses on the eye and put this over the glasses. And you can add plus or minus or prisms or, or filters or something, anything what you like. And it is worn only for five or ten minutes. And also, if the child is not allowing that you are looking at all, and not allowing that you are bringing a glass before the glass, or if it is very much painful or something, then you stand out again from the practice, you sit down and give this, and then you are pilot or something like this and uh, wear these glasses and then you can drop in there quickly <laughs> not you are not uh, uh, it is not necessary to hold the glasses you can drop in and take the measurement measurement from one meter distance it is easy it is not so dangerous as, uh, as <laughs>
combined with the uh, asthenia, then it takes two months time until it is ready. And sometimes the asthenia disappears when they are coming again. So it is now in the glass, but it is not in the eye. And if the asthenia is growing, then I can do it with the second, the next glass to correct. It depends also if the child is still squinting. With the, with the first plus glasses, if the squint will disappear, then I don't care much for half or, or some, uh, sometimes more astigma. If he is still squinting, then I do it correctly. So if you, if you saw two... Uh, two, it is already too much. Yes, yes. Uh, would you write all of it? Not necessarily all of it. Yeah? All of it or just part of it? All? All of his rheumatism <coughs> in the glasses, first pair? Two in the pair? Oh, yes. No, it is, it is possible. Two can be given immediately. But if you measure four, then I give perhaps only two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, it is making very much distortion uh, and the brain is correcting astigmatism itself. I had a professor who has worn plus four astigmatic glasses. And the glasses have been worn once and I was very much astonished that he can read and, and work like anything. He had 0.8 vision without for that with astigma, war on the eyes. <coughs> and with the glasses we had to be one point zero, yes. But without even also. The brain was correct. And if it is the same, the computers can do the same thing. If you have uh, unfocused pictures and you put it in a computer with a certain program, it will be coming out sharp. So the same thing is doing with the brain. Only if you correct it, then the brain is getting one work less. It has not to be uh, work. And if you want uh, from this phrase, I have some here, how much could it be? Ten dollars? Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody more? <laughs> yes. Do I hear 20? <laughs> yeah. 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 So the, the, the question is how long have to wait on the future? Acknowledging the facts which are a little bit uh, lost for the surgeons but surely a gain, positive gain for the babies. But the babies are not so important. At least now. Are you familiar with the term anatropization? Yes, yes. Do you, in prescribing um, large amounts of um, lens correction, ever worry about disturbing that whole process, and I know the strabismus is much the, the primary issue here, but do you ever worry that, that, that you are disturbing that in the proposition? <coughs> and, and now we have been speaking at this, uh, uh, you, you have been, we have been speaking that you are seeing many children with uh, six, seven, eight, nine year, years, uncorrected, and with high hypopia. So the amitropization was not taking place. What happened was the emit now I would I would say the amitropization did take place, but at a cost of being totally unable to deal with the visual near point, and consequently they end up being quote unquote learning disabled, dyslexic. Uh, low school achievers, yeah. but they had still the hypermobile disorder, etc., etc. Yeah. 
and I have uh, uh, corrected uh, plus 10 perhaps and sometimes the plus 10 is still there with 11 and in other children it is going down from 9 to 6, 4 and it arrives at minus 2 and I don't know why because they were wearing the glass in the same manner. So I don't know what is regulating the growth of the eye. I think it is genetically determined, as it is determined how your hair will be at 50 or at 60, when it will be growing gray. And you can't eat so much carrots as you like. It will not be changed. So the amatropization is a, a beautiful word, but I don't think that the glasses are having any influence. The eye is growing as it is written in the genetic code. And we cannot influence this genetic code at this time. So the amatropization is an argument against glasses that the surgeons could have the domain. And it is an argument against glasses, as it is an argument against the glasses that the glasses can be broken and damaging. But I have seen only one part rating by a bicycle. already a girl who was 12 or 13 and it may be the same accident would be more severe without glasses because she was falling in the hand and that was a severe damage and the perforating injury was just uh, made two sutures and the uh, lesion was again full and if it is a uh, plastic it is not happening now at this time there have been no plastic glasses and so that the eyeglasses for the baby are protecting you. I have not yet seen a comparison, but I think uh, that accidents are rare and perhaps more rare in, in uh, even in the school, with glasses as without. Yes? Um, I know that you said that the baby should even be bathed in glasses. Do you also have them sleep in them? Mm, I have some babies who are sleeping in, because they have so much difficulties, the parents that I have been asking uh, should be the, uh, can be the eyeglasses left on for the night. Why not? Why not? What about all the naps during the day? That an infant usually takes several naps during the day. Naps. Oh yes. Then it is your choice. Just pretty much it is your choice. choice. Yes, yes. But it should be avoided that the baby is without us. Could you uh, describe a little bit your technique of actually handling the, the one month, the three month old, does the parent hold the child? Uh, oh, yeah. This kind yeah. of thing. Uh, could you just describe that a yes. little bit? Now it is so that the, the parent should be always holding the child. And then I am telling that he is very cold, is it? So that one hand should be of the parent, hold both hands of the child, because it's very cold, it should be a little bit warm, and then you have another hand, and this warm here, the stem, the, the, <laughs> this region. And then I have a good uh, position to make uh, strictly the measurement of reflection. Otherwise, the child is uh, always uh, doing something against it, and if it is not done quickly, then it is never done. It is getting more and more difficult. And at last, uh, when it is uh, no other help, then coming an assistant and holding the eye up, and holding, but then it is always crying. And the other patients are thinking that we are killing the baby. <laughs> What do you try to get the, the 
baby to look at? What do you use for baby? We have a, a, an elephant. We have a, a, a mother form with music. When, when you pull it, it plays something. And this is a, a, a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, against uh, against uh, disturbing the examination, the Chinese look at it, you know. <laughs> and then I can do everything. And even the parents are then astonished that uh, how it is working. And they are asking of, often, how is it possible to to measure the refraction of a small bay. They don't believe. Because the, the parents and grandparents are always asked, is this better or this better? Yeah. And they are never telling which one is better. Is it? <laughs> Both are bad. <laughs> But with the baby, it is different. I tell which one is better. <laughs> <laughs> and how? And then I can tell that I have an eye which has a certain light from my retinoscope, and this light is falling in the pupil, and I can show you, and this pupil will be red. And then I go out and in, and as the pupil is changing from red to black and back, I can tell with a, a series of glasses just it is six times where the change is, uh, is coming. And then six times is the true one, which is needed. And, uh, and this instrument of uh, Dr. Friedman is making uh, a photo, a Polaroid photo, of the pupils, and there is a small semilunar shadow, up or down, right and left, and with one dietary failure, I think he can uh, tell astigmatism and the other way. With polarity failure. Polarity failure. Yes, failure. And uh, the apparatus <coughs> of Atkinson, Jane Atkinson, she has a, a video camera and she is making it on focus. I have not been working it, but it's very expensive. 8,000 pounds, which is about uh, two uh, double dollars. More. But the retinoscopy is not so expensive. <laughs> and this is the most rapid. It's the most rapid. And I think that uh, if somebody cannot do retinoscopy, he a very happy time, even with, with grandfathers and grandmothers, to tell which glass will be good. <laughs> yes, because it takes a half an hour or more. Each glass is not good, and this is too little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the number. Yeah. And the retinoscopy also there, the, uh, not the street retinoscopy. No, it takes too much time. That's right. Yes. Spot. Yeah, just part. Accepting blood image. 
but six, seven, eight is the most dangerous, and it is still causing only 50% isotropia, 50 or 55, no more, because the decision is always in the brain, and if the brain has a strong fusion, then you can accommodate eight diapers, the eyes are still straight, as long as you have no fear, and it may be, you can avoid it. And this is about 5% or 10% which have good fusion, good accommodation and 8 diaphragm hypopia. The others have been 8 diaphragm hypopia and this is more, are giving up <coughs> to see clearly. They have experienced if they make the big effort, it is causing other problems and they are giving up. They are seeing point one and they think the world is created like this. And they accept the blurred images. And they will be unguilty after this. Or if they accommodate four or five diapers from the age to see a little bit better, they can have a, a micro or small angle from this as well. But the majority is split. But not everybody. Therefore, it is not the cause. The cause is always 100% consequence. Stimulus is having only the most dangerous stimulus. is always a 55%, no more. Hypermetropia is not the cause. The cause is to accommodate for distance and to lose the fusion check. It's two. Two causes. Accommodative cause, cause, causes are always two. It's never one. And uh, this is also the two sorts of intermittent uh, isotropia. The one is accommodating all the time, but squinting only at the evening when the fusion is already tired. And the other sort is not accommodated. And the hyperopia is higher. Perhaps the first uh, is only two or three diapers. They accommodate all the day. In the evening they are squinting with the two diapers in hyperopia. Intermittent. The other sort is not accommodating because the hyperopia is five or six. But if the grandparents are coming to visit and the child wants to see them clearly, then he squints because he accommodates suddenly. It is a, perhaps I have also brought something. It's covered. And this is the second type of intermittent isotropia. And I call it the motor because the accommodation is the motor of the, of the deviation. And the other is the sensory type, because the sensory check, the fusion check, is giving that. And the more frequent is the first, uh, with, the, with the intermittent squint in the evening, or when tired. The other is, uh, is rare somewhat real. And it is the higher high. This is also an interesting thing. And later on the two will be amalgamated because if the motor type is quitting again and again, the fusion is deteriorating. Suppression is coming up. Then you have already motor cause and sensory cause. Again two. Always two. So it is uh, told the uh, accumulative etiology is a unique causal, unique causal, it is impossible. Squint has always many causes. Yes, fusion and loss, accommodation for this. Two. Two is not one. 
most of the Hindus. And this is also the many uh, isotropy of cases starting after inoculation, starting after, after fever. It was not attacking the brain and causing the damage, it was attacking the fusion. And in this way, causing the second uh, uh, cause, and the first, the accommodation, it was present as always, but not able to release the deviation. So we, if you see an intermittent swing, ask when is the child swinging? And if the parents are telling in the evening when he's tired, it is true. Maybe true. Most frequently. Or if, if the child is crying too much, then <coughs> he is exhausted and after this crying. So that I cannot imagine any other cause of cause of isotropia than convergence used for distance without fusion check. That's all. And this disturbance is always provoking adaptation. Sub suppression, shift of localization. And there you have the not relaxing accumulative behavior. And if it is not relaxing, it is only today. Yesterday it was relaxing. And perhaps tomorrow will be also again relaxing with the glasses given in, in between. So, for the diagnosis of the etiology of the isotropia, you need the case history. If there was an intermittent phase, asking from the parts, was it constant, the script immediately? No, it was just starting. And we, we were hoping it will go away, but it didn't go away. So it is already accumulated. If you have an intermittent phase, it is always accumulated. Is it in the past? You are too early to take the treatment. Is it at the present? You can relax immediately. And if it is only in the future, then you have to walk hard with the, with the glass. But the surgery doesn't help in either. Yes, it can take away the convergence. The child cannot converge for distance anymore. Is it a result? I don't think. It is a it is a danger. It is a result from cosmetic. But it is renouncing on the treatment of causes. Goben has now written a book, and he was uh, holding also a congress in Brussels. <coughs> He's working in Leuven and in Antwerp, and some uh, of his patients were coming to see me. And I have been writing him about some arguments in his book. About, uh, I don't remember exactly what is important, about the anatomization, that you shouldn't give the glasses. And this was an argument of him. The squint is always returning immediately when you, if you take down the glass. Sure. For some time. But after the suppression is not in the program, then you 
kid can take down the glasses, the squint is not coming back. Now we are making always with every patient always a trial, taking down the glasses. It is not allowed, but it is required for a short second. Take down the glasses. Squint is immediately returning. Suppression is still there. Perhaps it is only remembering that I can suppress. And uh, it is interesting that after one year, gas is taken down, squint is returning only after one minute. Quite a long time. And it is disturbed. But in the first case it wasn't disturbed. The child was not, was not uh, remembering at all, yes, so it's good, so it's also good, squinting. But one year later, it's good with the glasses, without the glasses. He makes a, a grimace and squints. And the old is disturbing, give me back the glasses. And then we are on the way, and perhaps another year later, she can take down the glasses and not squint. And I was writing to Gobel that, yes, you are right, the glasses are not uh, making the cure immediately. But what about if, if it, after some years, not returns? If you have done the surgery, then the eyes may be divergent. If you have not done the surgery, the eyes may also divergent, maybe, but you reduce the glasses, take down, and you have straight eyes. But if you have operated, you need another operation now against the exotope. And go and told why, is it not good? <laughs> <laughs> yes, good for us. <laughs> not for the baby, not for the child. So this is the, the problem with the continuously wearing the glasses and returning without glasses. So, any more questions? Yes? Yeah, can you make a comment about um, exotropia? The onset is usually later. That uh, it, is it not? Yeah, yeah. And, and is, yes. there, is there less likelihood that you can avoid surgery with, uh, with over minus and, and other techniques? And yeah. That one is mostly yeah. a surgical approach. So now this is quite a new chapter, the exotropia, that uh, we have not been speaking about. But um, it is uh, later starting as isotropia. And if it starts later, it is not disturbing at all. Why? Because with isotropia you have uncrossing image. And this is very unusual for the near. With, a, with your, your method, you have uncrossed images always for distance. And this is all right, if it is for the reason. When the isotropia, it comes near, very much disturbing. It is immediately suppression, provoking suppression. If you have exotropia, you have crossed images. But you have always crossed images, is it? For the near, it is always, images are crossed. They are a little bit more crossed. It's no different, not disturbing. You are taking it. And if you, it is disturbing only for distance. Because the distance, there should not be. It should be only for the near, the cross images. For distance, it should not be crossed. Then it provokes the suppression for distance. And this is then to the danger in, in exotropia. You have to give the super, the over minus, and the dominant eye always. 
And this is then an anti-suppressive thing. Only on the dominant eye. And if it alternates, then the other eye can have all of mine. And but if the isotropia is darkened early, the child was never discovering that he can move the eyes, the so-called Kogan, pseudo Kogan disease. And I have two other, one little Turkish girl, who also <laughs> having the eyes on it. And it was left one year so. And now we have big difficulties to bring this back. But surgery is not better. Three surgeons, perhaps. But we are giving five glasses before three surgery. I'm struggling a little bit with uh, just giving the over minus on one eye. Uh, my training and my experience is that when you have a diopter of uncorrected anisotropia between the two eyes, that usually incurs a central suppression. Yes, when you but have that, it is not that the other eye should not have no correction. The other eye should have the full correction what it needs. And it is already the difference smaller. Because the deviating eye has the higher refractive arrow. It is chosen for deviation because it has more blurred images. It is higher refractive arrow. And now you have to, uh, this anisoconia uh, or anisometropia, to equalize that the dominating eye should be corrected more, should be had over mind. So there is uh, not much difference. And it is so that the deviating eye is mostly astigmatism. The brain is making the choice. And it is never on the, on the thousand cases. It's never occurring that the deviating eye has less refractive eye. This is not. But, but why? Perhaps if the cornea has some um, nebulae. Or, or, yeah. It, it may be. Yes, this eye is going diagonal and common. Otherwise, no. Why not over minus both eyes? Over minus? Why, oh. why not? Why not? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's the question. Okay, so you're recommending only over minusing the preferred eye. Yes. Why? Because the other eye is suppressed. So what difference does it make if you over minus the other? So if you give over minus on the other eye, it has no effect in this way. But if you give over minus on the dominant eye, and the non-dominant eye is coming in, and the suppression is smaller, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then you can give there also the over minus. In between, the suppression is going on the other eye, alternating. And then I tell the parents, and this is a, a good sign, because if you have you change your you are dwelling every, every hour to, to go in another house. Then you are leaving soon. And therefore, if the suppression is going on the other eye, it is not long remaining there. If we could remove it from the first seat. <coughs> and it is important to remove it at first. And later on, you can give on the other, other eye also over if there is needed. It is mostly needed. And you cannot give at, at first for that the other one. It has to be given in some steps that the child is accommodating for this time. More and more. <coughs>
So it is not complicated, but it also not too simple. Not to give uh, just on both eyes minus three, because it will not be war. So you're assuming that the person is not going to respond to the minus. Is that correct? So you're basically just penalizing that eye with the minus one. Oh, uh, penalizing is uh, the opposite because penalizing is relaxing. Is a uh, Okay. Right. In order to relax. Forget penalizing, yeah. like you're just blurring the preferred act. Uh, no, I was uh, giving those an abstract to the, to the American Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology about experimental isotropia. And the experimental isotropia, isotropia, experimentally produced by minus gas but not on normal, but on exotropic. And if the angle is diminished and it is going and going, going, and it is now going to iso, then I stop the experiment. I induced isotropia in the exotropic patient, but only so much as I wanted. I could go farther to bring it in isotropia. But why? And this is a sort of experimental strabismus in humans and other sort I have read about prisons given to babies. I don't know how long. Because this is also another sort of posing experimental isotropia if you are giving prisons. Can I, am I getting it straight here? I'm trying to pick it up. If you over minus both eyes, that will cause more suppression in the already suppressed eye? Is but that the experience is not. No. Not. Because it is not needed. The suppression was caused because the eye was deadly. And you have now cross images for distance. And it is disturbing. Not disturbing for me. We have no suppression for me in Isotro. Or very rare. Very rare. The first is always suppression for this. And if you bring the eyes already straight, suppression will not grow. It's going to be Only the first step is difficult to bring the suppressed eye in the foveal position, in the bifoveal position. It doesn't know where it is. Therefore, I don't uh, overcorrect it first. I give it only the most, the best correction, fully. And if the suppression is going away, and there is always some intermittent exotropia, perhaps on the other eye, then I give here the over minus. The suppression is going to be. I guess my trouble is that if you over minus the good eye, yes. and the brain says I need that eye and it makes it in focus, both eyes are going to accommodate, that's blurring the suppressed eye and causing it to not be corrected correctly. You, you should count and you will see. You should try. And you will see it is not. The accommodation is not always symmetric. I've seen already two, three diapers different. Manapika so also. It is not. <laughs> I don't know why. You should try. And you see. There is no danger. You are causing experimental isotropia. And then you can finish the experiment anytime you like. But it is making surgery unnecessary, and this is not true. So it was rejected. As always, I have already an award. <laughs>
for most rejected abstract artists. Thank you. 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 Thank you.